Sam, let's talk uh, about your football journey in Malaysia. Before you joined Penang Football Club, you spent a few years with Johor. Uh, You know, His Royal Highness, uh, Tuanku Makota Johor, has been credited as a person who has revolutionized Malaysian football. Uh, How is uh, Tuanku Makota as a boss, Sam, if you can share with us? Apa khabar orang kita? Salam gol terpantas dalam sejarah Liga Super Malaysia. Bertemu kita kembali dalam slot Sembang Santai Orang Kita, Pulau Pinang bertemu Melaka. Uh, terima kasih uh, Muhammad Khairu Azrin Ghazali kerana bersama kita dalam slot Sembang Santai Orang Kita, Pulau Pinang bertemu Melaka. Khairu Azrin dilahirkan di Selangor. Betul. Namun lebih mesra dikenali sebagai Acong. Uh, dari mana datang nama Acong ini? Boleh nyatakan? Nama nama saya Muhammad Khairu Azrin bin Ghazali. Nama panggilan saya Acong. Uh, start uh, kawan-kawan saya panggil Acong daripada sekolah lagi lah. Daripada umur saya 12 tahun. Saya main bola untuk sekolah Dan kawan-kawan saya nak panggil nama Azrin tu dalam padang macam agak susah ha, Lepas tu, dia orang cuba fikir nama lain lah bila, uh, bila tengok nama, uh, bila tengok muka saya macam Cina masa tu Dan <laughs> uh, lepas tu dia orang cakap, uh, Acong lah senang Dan <laughs> sampai sekarang lah, dia melekat sampai sekarang Okey, nak tanya, hmm. sebagai midfielder ni, Acong ada tak siapa-siapa idola Acong ketika uh, zaman permainan Acong ni? Ada. Uh, siapa tipu, dia? Tipu kongsi. kalau tak, tipu kalau tak ada. <laughs> uh, satu, Paul Skoll, Manchester United punya uh, player. Sebab saya suka dia punya hantaran dia. Dan seorang lagi, Casemiro, uh, Real Madrid daripada Brazil. Dia punya hard worker dia, dia punya kerja keras dia dekat bahagian midfield lah. Okay. Kalau uh, menyokong pemain daripada Manchester United dengan Real Madrid ni, uh, uh, tim yang disokong oleh Acong mana satu? Lebih pada Manchester lah. Ah, cantik! <laughs> okay, mari kita bercakap tentang persediaan bertemu Melaka. Uh, sebenarnya ramai yang tidak tahu Acong uh, pernah berhikmat dan bermain dengan Melaka satu ketika dahulu. Uh, boleh Acong kongsikan bersama kita klub-klub lain yang pernah ber- Acong berhikmat dengan? Uh, saya bermula kerjaya saya dengan PKN SFC okay. uh, pada 2009 dengan 2010 tapi masa itu dengan Presiden Cup lah. Dan uh, 2011 saya dinaikkan pangkat sampai ke 2016 dengan PKN SFC dan 2017 baru saya pergi ke Melaka United lepas tu 2018 dengan Felda United lepas setahun tu 2019 saya dengan Teringganu FC seterusnya 2020 dengan 2021 sekarang, saya dengan Penang. Okey. Uh, saya nak tanya Acong, bagaimana persediaan pasukan uh, bertemu dengan Melaka? Hmm, bagi saya, tim Penang sangat bersedia untuk jumpa dengan Melaka. Sebab pada saya, lepas uh, game lepas ni tak boleh cuci mata perlukan poin sebanyak mana yang boleh sampai habis habis game. Okey, saya nak ambil satu soalan daripada peminat daripada Facebook. Mereka ingin bertanya, kenapa pemain Penang FC jarang mengambil percubaan melalui sepakan dari luar kotak penalti? Adakah itu gameplay Pulau Pinang atau macam mana tu Acong? Uh, pada saya itu terpulang kepada pemain-pemain untuk membuat sepakan daripada luar kotak penalti. 
Tapi pada uh, pada saya kalau saya dapat peluang, sudah tentu saya akan akan uh, lakukanlah. Saya pulang pada pemain-pemain tu. Uh, apa pandangan Acong terhadap peminat-peminat setia tim Harimau Kumbang kita? Uh, untuk peminat Harimau Kumbang, anda memang terbaik. Terima kasih kerana menyokong. Sentiasa menyokong sampai sekarang. Jatuh ke, bangun ke, menang ke, kalah ke, sentiasa menyokong. Okay, saya nak tanya satu benda kepada Acong. Uh, okay. Acong dah berada di Penang uh, dah dua tahun lah, hampir dua tahun. Ada yeah. apa-apa masakan kegemaran Acong di Pulau Pinang? <laughs> masakan? <laughs> saya suka nasi kandar. <laughs> <laughs> Okey, terima kasih Acong. Terima kasih bersama kita. Acong, saya mendoakan bersama-sama semua peminat Pulau Pinang memperoleh tiga mata penuh bertemu Melaka pada Sabtu oh. ini. Ha? Terima, kasih. Terima kasih kerana bersama kami Acong. Samuel, thank you for being with us today on Sembang Santai Orang Kita, Pulau Pinang bertemu uh, Melaka. Uh, Sam, can you share with the fans where were you born and where did you spend your childhood years? Yeah, I was uh, obviously born in in England, um, a place called uh, Bracknell, Bracknell, Berkshire. So um, I'm it's close to Reading, about about 10 minutes away from Reading. So. Just a short drive down the the A329 road, and then you're you're at my my hometown. So obviously, I spent lived there until I was 21, and then and then moved to Malaysia. Uh, Sam, when did you start playing uh, as a goalkeeper? I was probably around nine or ten. I I, I started off in uh, out on pitch and um, practicing like your basic skills at a Saturday soccer school, um, and yeah, I just. I wanted to join a team, but the only the only place they had him for me, the team was a goalkeeper. So um, I think I think they said that because I tried on pitch and I probably wasn't the best at that age. So um, they said that we you can sign you, but you're gonna have to play in goal. So I played in goal for a couple of games in this tournament, and they liked what they saw. So it just started from there, really. I um, I played I played Saturday on uh, in goal, and then on Sunday I played on pitch just for like another team. So. I feel that's how sort of I developed like the, the the sort of skills with the ball as well. Not not skills, but the comfortability with the ball. Excellent. Uh, growing up, Sam, uh, who is your role model as a goalkeeper? I always I always went for the 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 shorter sort of goalkeepers in 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 the Premier League. Like Shay Shay Gibbon was one for me when when I was a lot younger. Then obviously, and then David De Gea. Um, I think, but obviously Barthez. I just I just. I always drifted towards the, the the smaller goalkeepers because a lot of times um, I, I, I tried at places like Chelsea and and Arsenal and and they all said technically I was fine. Just they said you're not you, you're not going to be six foot three, so we, we can't. The, the, what they said was that we can we can teach you ability, but we can't teach you height. That was, <laughs> that was uh, ruthless, huh? Ruthless, but but yes. that's. Uh, when I was sort of in my teens, that, that's they they were all looking for six foot three goalkeepers. So um, they said from from League One in England, 
they said that if you weren't even six foot two, they wouldn't even consider you unless you were um, unbelievable. So, uh, they, unfortunately, there is no magic pill to grow your height. You know, <laughs> I, my my dad looked for things. I tell you, my dad my dad looked, scrolled the internet to see if there was any any magic pill to make me grow. And yeah, and I, I think what what he found wasn't wasn't legal. So, <laughs> so Sam, growing up. Did you which football club did you support? You, you know, you you grew up in England. Which football club is your your support? No, I was. Oh, I, I used to go to the Reading Reading games with my father. So, um, I, I went there. Well, I used to play Saturday morning. So Saturday afternoons when Reading were at home, we always used to go and, and watch the games. So that was that was the year when they they went up into the Premier League um, when they had players like uh, Kevin Doyle, Marcus Hahnemann, the, the goalkeeper from America. So. I obviously grew up watching them. Just being being just the local club down the road in the in the Championship and Premiership was 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 obviously good to go down and watch them. Sam, let's talk uh, your, about your football journey in Malaysia. Before you joined Penang Football Club, you spent few years with Johor. Yeah. Uh, you know, His Royal Highness Tuanku uh, Makota Johor has been credited as a person who has revolutionised Malaysian football. Uh, how is uh, Tuan Kumakuta as a boss, Sam, if you can share with us? He, no, he's, he's, he's top class as a boss. Um, he, he takes care of all his players. He makes sure all, all the players' welfare is, is taken care of. And I think um, I think a, a lot of a lot of clubs in Malaysia, they you know they they think that when things aren't okay outside, you can still do things good on the pitch and. It's not true. You got to, you got to be taken care of, and your family's got to be happy, and you know you got to have your transport and, and stay in a nice place. So he he really takes care of the welfare, and you see all the the amount of as you said the, the amount of respect he gets around Malaysian football. He is the the pioneer in, in how things should be done. It's, it's he he runs he runs Johor like Premiership Championship clubs in, in England, and and that's we are professional footballers with you know we that, that's how you should be running football clubs if, if you're going to so i've got a lot of respect for for, for tmj and, and what he's done for malaysian football and, and like i said working under him for for four years was was it was a pleasure so he um yeah really a really good boss and, and i've got a lot of respect for, for, for tmj at this moment of time i think even penang football club management are trying their level best you know to step up and I try to give the best to the players and also the officials. Hopefully, within the next few years, we can be there. You know, the, no, the def- baby I've, steps are already being taken. What do I've, you think since, then? Yeah, so, since the new management's come in, it's, it's obviously uh, it's been a massive improvement since 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 obviously I think Penang over the last three or four years probably developed a bit of a bad reputation in terms of late salaries and stuff. And speaking from experience for this year, every, everything's been on time. Um, and then the player, you, you're seeing, you're seeing it rewarded on the pitch as well. So you're seeing, you're seeing that the players don't have the stress of late salaries, and, and you know, two months not paid, three months, and, and and you know, it's coming next week, next week. So I think so I was sitting in. I think people need to remember that, you know, we, we've just come up from the Premier League. You spent a couple of years in in the Premier League. Uh, Every time you came up, Penang came up to the Super League, they they had nine points, six points. You know, we yes. we always went straight back down. So I think, I think the little changes around the the top is running from the the board of directors down to the the, the kit men and then the masseuses, and we're all we're all happy. And the results are you, you see in the results for that. So for Penang to be sitting third in the league, I don't think I don't think a lot anybody of expected have, that. Let, let's be honest with ourselves. It's, true. It's, it's true. I don't think. I think we people thought we'd be on a maybe a, a you know just to stay up. So he's definitely paying his dividends. Everything being like I said, the baby sets being taken to, to run it more professionally. So I think I think Penang is such beautiful. It's such a beautiful place to live. The, the club, um, the, the pitch is one of the best in Malaysia. It's Malaysia, the fan base. So. It's got all the potential to be such a big club and, and these changes definitely needed to happen. Uh, Sam, uh, talking about performance, your performance caught the eye of a Malaysian national coach, Tan Chen Ho. Can you share with us your experience? You know, after some time, a Penang player was called up to play for the national team. Can you share with us your experience uh, during your call-up? No, it was, it was obviously, it was really proud when, when I got the news. Um, it's something I've been working towards, obviously. 
um, coming here and getting regular game time definitely definitely helped me. Um, so it, I set vision boards out for myself and achievements I want to achieve, and, and one of them this year was was a national team call up. So um, yeah, it, it was just look despite not playing. I played 25 minutes in a friendly against Q8 um, and obviously despite not playing in any of the, the tiered games or the official games, it, it was just an amazing experience to be a part of, um, yes. working, working with coach, coach Am and, and obviously coach Tan about you know tactics, how he wants to play and with the best players in Malaysia it was for, for it wasn't you know it wasn't a, a week we, we spent a month together so training every day so. Like I said, you, you don't necessarily have to play to pick up little experiences. Obviously, you, yes, you pick up yes. more from you pick up more from playing. But um, what what I learned being away for for a month it's just it, it, I'm hoping to, to obviously take that and, and improve my my football from it. Excellent, uh, Sam. How's uh, Penang preparation in facing Malacca this coming Saturday? How are yeah, you? Uh, yeah. How is your preparation? Obviously, with games are coming so thick and fast at the moment, so. We haven't got really time to get on the training ground and go through, you know, little little things. It's more recovery, preparation for the game, and then play. So uh, it's tough on the body. I know. I know a lot of us are feeling sore, um, but look, we're, we're, our confidences are high with, with the with the win last night, obviously. So um, yeah, yeah. We, we, like I said, we. I think uh, six points out of nine is, like I said, isn't 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 too bad and we played yes. you know spring ball so it, i think people just need to to keep fans and, and everyone just need to keep uh you know keep keep obviously level-headed and, and realize that we we have just come up so you know i think i think it's very easy when we're sitting in this position to start thinking we should you know be second and, and you know yes. and things like this you know but yeah. like i said we're, we're definitely we're definitely doing better than everyone expected so 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 far, so excellent. Uh, do you have anything to say about our beloved Penang football fans? Just just keep keep supporting us and, and thanks for obviously thanks for obviously all the support we, we, we do get. I know obviously there, there's some some bad, but you know majority is supporting and, and it's just love for the state. So we all share that love, that same passion. We all want the results and. and Sometimes performances or, or results don't come, but keep supporting us because because that means the world to us. That that means the world. Um, like I said we're gonna go, we're gonna go through good times, through bad times together. But it's all for Penang, and it's not for the lack of, of trying. You know what I mean? So yeah, keep keep the support, and, and we're hoping we can do obviously as well as we can for you, and and, and push the Penang's sort of reputation in, in the Super League and, and keep it where it should be. Sam, my prayers and our supporters' prayers will be with you and the team for this coming yeah. Saturday's match. All the best. We do hope Penang gets the three points. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Sam. Thank you for being with us today, Sam. Take care. Oh, thank you All so the much. best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.